Hello and welcome to Bud's RPG Review, where I give my thoughts on role-playing games, card games and board games. To celebrate my channel passing the 750 mark, I've decided to take a look at a book that isn't often seen. 2005's Blood on the Reich, A Journey Through the Old World for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay by Black Library Publishing. Ok, first a bit of history. Blood on the Reich is a 96 page reproduction of a well known book that exists in the old world that was written by Tobias Helmgart, a scholar who spent his life travelling and documenting the diversity of the people and creatures that live there and the dangers that they face. Also the book, as you can see, is presented in a horizontal format. Ok, to the cover. Here we have a not bad but tiny piece by Paul Dainton. On to the inside. First up is an introduction by the author, followed by a map of the old world. We have a table of contents followed by a list of the colour plates that are contained within. These are particularly noteworthy people the author found interesting. There are 12 in total. First up is Half Lorenz, a well-loved character from folklore whose characteristics were appropriated in the play The Adventures of a Dumpy Drummer. He is described as being foul-mouthed and having a talent for trapping animals which he kept about his person making him smell foul. He also had his whiskers in the style of a twin tail comet. This is followed by some sketches of a style that is replete throughout the book. He covers the citizens of the Empire decks, which includes a hurdy-gurdy player with a snotling on a chain, and various dandies and duelists with points of note written next to them. Next up is the dockers and sailors. Here the author warns us of the dangers of visiting the docks in the evening, and has various sketches of sailors, including one with a full shark carcass on his back and a crazy old cat lady. After this he talks about his distaste for moneylenders, and has a section on barber surgeons with an accompanying illustration. Next up is the corpse handler, and after this he talks about the street vendor that serves chicken, and the rat catcher who is for some reason very friendly with the street vendor. We also have a drawing of a butcher shop. This is followed by sketches of an armourer at work with his apprentices, and then we have a fishwife and a scribe, someone who sells their services of being able to write letters for the illiterate of the old world, at a price per word rate. We then have a brief discourse on artists, and then lots of drawings of beggars and urchins. Then we have some festival performers which includes the Holy Comet and the Green Man and the fairly creepy Hobby Horse which was used in a festival in a village in the depths of the Drakvold Forest. We have sketches of various women of ill repute and this is followed by our second colour plate, Thaliaro. A highly ranked member of the Black Assassins Guild, Thaliaro is known as the Killer Thespian who always travels masked and incognito, heard only when it's too late by jingling bells on his suit. After this we have a section dedicated to the servants of the Empire. This is where the author details those that do the jobs that others find distasteful. It includes executioners, lamplighters and various city watchers, where he heaps praise on the watch of Talapheim, saying that they are the best in the Empire. We then have our next colour plate, Hanel. The author talks about him being his bodyguard on occasion, and how he was taken into slavery in Araby, but managed to escape and forge his own path. He has an ingenious helmet forged in Nome that is replete with mirrors and magnifying glasses that allows him to see with greater clarity, even in the dark. We then have a piece on swords for hire be they cutthroats, footpads, brigands and thieves. This includes a man who uses a fish studded with nails as a weapon. This naturally leads into hirelings, brigands and hired thugs. The next colour plate is Gerontius. Known as the Blind Priest, Gerontius is described as charismatic and appallingly violent and a steadfast servant of Sigmar. Even though he was blind, he was a fearsome opponent who eschewed help and the author even describes him charging into battle reciting passages from the life of Sigmar against a troll which fell to his blade. Religion in the Empire is next. Here we see the raiment of various priesthoods such as Mor, Manan and Verena and Sigmar and this is followed by a section on the maids of Sigmar, a reclusive order of women who have no contact with the outside world apart from on one day a year when they leave their enclave to sing the dirge of brutal truth in the surrounding villages, collecting donations as they do so. There are sketches of witch hunters, preachers and even a fearsome looking Sigmarite cultist. There is a piece on flagellants where it describes them being used in battle and causing the enemy to reel against the assault. Following this is our next colour plate, Peter the Pious, a flagellant who sought to lead an army across the deserts of Araby. Nobody knows what happened to Peter, however there is a rhyme that hints at his fate. After this is Magic Users. Here it shows wizards from the various colleges and talks in particular about celestial wizards and their ability to predict the future and bright wizards who are the most prized in war due to their affinity for fire-based magic. It also talks about the aloof hierophants who are the light wizards. Following the sketches of the various colleges we have another colour plate, Hermann Gotts a warrior and highwayman with a legendary reputation, portrayed by many as a swashbuckling hero, but who was, in all actuality, a stone-cold killer. Next up is a rather odd section called Street Furniture. Here it talks about the odd things one finds on the roads and streets of the old world, such as the dried out corpses of saints, roadside shrines, and also about death on the streets, where it has some public torture and execution devices. It then goes on to illustrate crucifixions, bodies pinned by stakes and traitors nailed to the ground. There's also an oddity called Crow Posts. 
Crows are seen as harbingers of death and ill omen, and people hate them. The problem is, there's so much death and decay in the cities and villages that crows are naturally attracted to it. There's the odd tale of the Miller of Lyberg, a windmill that resisted being burned down by witch hunters and has since abandoned and thought haunted. This is followed by some drawings of grave robbers and a graveyard, and then we have a section on transport in the old world. This includes some rather nice sketches of coaches and boats, and this leads on to colour plates 7, 8, 9 and 10. Here we have the tale of the rat son of the butcher, or the sad tale of Trespass the Rat Boy, a fireside story of unknown origin that hints at the scaven and chaotic mutation. The next part is about the other races of the old world, where it has discussion on elves and dwarves, including a beardless dwarf female, and there are also some interesting pictures of nomads and desert dwellers from Araby. This is followed with a part on night goblins, recounting the author's tale where he hid and watched them march to war, and then went into their warrens and sketched what he found there. This is about as foul as you would expect with corpses, bones and offal everywhere. After this we have a drawing of a beastman herdstone and a shaman, which also has some interesting art on the various types of beastman, and then a rather large sketch of a giant. Colour plate number 11 is next, Albrecht Wolfpergen, a forester and woodsman known as the Wolf, who travelled to Kislev to fight chaos when they destroyed his home and family. He is a hero of folklore and is said to be able to change into a huge wolf at will. After this we have Creatures of the Old World, gives us sketches of normal things like wild boar and deer, and then moves hastily on to more unusual things like direwolves and bears and giant spiders. After this are two rather good drawings of trolls and squigs, with a nice picture of one eating a man. After this it touches on the skaven and there's a drawing of a rat ogre, of course drawn after it was killed. There's a sketch of a fearsome looking tree man and then it goes on to minotaurs, where it makes the distinction that their horns can face forward or backwards, something I had not really thought of before. After this is the manticore and the griffin, which the author has ridden upon, and it finishes with wyverns, and a sketch of the only basilisk that the author encountered. Finally, we have the last colour plate, the withering tree of hope. At the far end of the world is said to be a tree that grows more rotten and corrupted, black sap oozing from its bark as the empire crumbles around it. It ends the book on a rather gloomy note, that all things die, and all that we can do is treasure what we have, while we have it. Blood on the Reich is clearly a book that you don't need to play Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Its odd format makes it a bit of a pain to store, and it's essentially an art book with a little bit of fluff that you could use in your campaign. But where Blood on the Reich makes itself appealing is in the old adage, a picture is worth a thousand words. What we have here is visualisation of the old world, not really seen since the first edition rulebook. John Blanche's art has defined the old world more than any other artist, and his particular brand of strangers on the colour plate is a welcome sight. David Gallagher's art is good throughout and the sketches really bring the subjects to life and it makes the whole thing that bit more believable as a recounting by a traveller. This is the kind of book you could show to players to help them envisage the old world's particularly grim, filth-covered brand of fantasy and even as a DM you could learn a lot on how to present your game. It makes it clear that the old world is a place of ruthless violence, often hypocritical religious fervour and corruption from the core with the very real possibility that the polluted and nightmarish live amongst you plotting the downfall of civilization. I give Blood on the Reich a very respectable 7 out of 10. If you enjoyed this review, please make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my other reviews. Lastly, if you enjoy what I produce here, then maybe think about supporting me on Patreon. Bud out.